So you, what have you been doing? Uh, nothing. <laughs> okay, we didn't do anything. First of all, we came to London. We came to London. That's well, what we've done. Yes, but you know, we're now international. This so. is normal. No, no, no. no. What I is mean, normal, right? It's just, it's just what Lagos it is. today, it's London, London tomorrow. tomorrow. Hey, it's coming oh, I was about to say <laughs> squared. First of all, if they don't play that part of the song in this in this juncture, then we're not serious. <laughs> we're not serious people. Because this is why they said Lagos today, yeah. London tomorrow. Do you know, do you know what cracks me up is that like, so because we've done quite a bit of traveling recently, my dad was like, so you're going somewhere again. I was like, yes, just because you people see me in this house. You think, <laughs> you think no I have body. nothing doing? I'm international. <laughs> I'm international. See, I told them my group, you guys stop talking to me anyhow. <laughs> I booked a booked stop busy. talking to me anyhow. I said, you know, I, the place I want to be in life is before you message me, oh, hey, FK, what's up? Do you want to go for dinner? You first said, are you in town? No. <laughs> are you around? <laughs> That's the kind of thing. You know when people say, oh, where's this person? I'm like, Do you have to check if they're even around? Mm, hey, that's that's, the life that, that's it. That's what I want to be. That's what I want to be. Okay, so Irene, before we get into our conversations we always like have some agony aunt bits so okay. people write yeah. in all mm. sorts of questions we, yes. we give serious advice this okay. is a very serious place. very focused advice yes okay i'm, yes. Re- I'm with um, you <laughs> i'm with you <laughs> hi guys i love your podcast and you guys are doing great Thanks, thank girl. you she said my problem is i'm a reckless spender mm. i've tried everything to stop it just doesn't work i always end up spending anyhow i started using an app with the hope that i could cut back on my spending but guys, even when I don't have access to the money, I end up borrowing because I know I have kept that money somewhere. Child. I'm not a debtor or anything. I don't borrow money I can't pay back. But once I have that money, it seems like there's always something important I can't do without buying till the money finishes. Hence, I'm often more broke than not. It's really affecting me because there's lots of things I can only afford if I save. And I simply can't seem to do that. What do you guys think, what do you guys think I can do? My dear, <laughs> you need to put the spirit of spending uselessly. <laughs> well, how? How do how? you like? Do you know what? I think you have stop. to also have like quite. It's up to you what you want to achieve, right? Mm, yeah. And mm-hmm. I just think once you set those milestones, I always say this. You know, one of the hardest things in life is discipline. Yeah. Mm. Like even you guys, when we were talking about this earlier, just even showing up. Like you guys said, you've been doing this for how long now? <laughs> yeah, it's five long, years. It's like, and people don't see the back, the backstory. Yeah. Like the, the, when you're really in the trenches, the work. So it's like nothing good comes overnight sis so if you really want something it takes hardcore discipline mm. yeah so if you really want to save for those things my dear you have to be disciplined to know do you know what 10 percent of my whatever i make i'm gonna put it in this that, but that's what she's saying that she will still go that borrow money so my dear you're not disciplined it, no so do you know i have the perfect solution send the money to me <laughs> <laughs> Send the money to me because you see, if you send the money to me, it will shame allow you to come back and ask me that. <laughs> that was me. I said, which money? Which money is that? When did you give me money? Me, you gave me money. Me. When? When? And then who will she report to? Oh. You know, when she gives me the money, who believes that you sent me money I didn't give you? But I don't do that. Uh, it's not my reputation. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, I really feel like forget all these apps that yeah. save money. Send the money. Let me send you my account details. Send the money to me. I'll keep it safe. Express. And you can't come and ask me because I will insult you. So <laughs> I honestly feel like don't send it to one of your friends. Your friends are very bad. Once you beg them like these two sub stories, your friends are sending back. You must send yeah, the, money. the money. I'm telling you, I send money to me. My okay. sister. Like I said, I don't have any high road. <laughs> so even if you are in an emergency, that's you and your emergency business. I will keep the money for you. So this is why I suggest capital mm. D. You just the truth is that there's no like it's a it's actually a mindset thing. There's no advice mm. we can give you. That's the truth. Fake can be because even if she gives you the money. Well, she's going to no. She'll still be spending. She will money. borrow. You don't understand. She she's that's what I'm saying. That's her business. Let her go and borrow it, <laughs> then and put herself into debt. But as for the money she gave me, Sha, that's the end. That's yeah. the end of that. It's crazy. It's just a mindset thing. Like seeing, seeing, the thing things you want or you need as a goal. Mm. Yeah, rather yeah. than like you just having to obtain it. Yeah. And just actually, what do you, is it want versus need mm. Yeah, as well? Like, mm. do you really, do you really need that boot? Is it, is it <laughs> yeah. a must? That shoe? Is it a must? That shoe. I mean, let me tell you, shoe? fundamentally. Do you own a house? <laughs> <laughs> do you have tangible assets, mm. my dear? So please, put down the shoes. Yeah. It's okay. But fundamentally, she doesn't have a problem. Oh, and a person will get money they spend. <laughs> if she was broke, she won't have this money. these issues. Mm, so do you get these are rich girl problems. More money, more Say, problems. Uh-uh. Yeah. Imagine me saying I have a spending issue. Okay, that what? Where was, Where the, was the money, money to spend? <laughs> so listen, sis, you know, it's clear that you're making money to be because if you weren't making money, you can't people who don't have money don't have is the the luxury of oh my gosh, I have a spending problem. Rich girl problem. I'm telling mm. you. First world problem. I'm telling you. <laughs> My name is Kosi. 
and she says my boyfriend might be cheating on me help me excuse me Ex excuse me how can we help you are we the one he's cheating with <laughs> Do you understand? What are, what are we helping what you we with? Do? No, I want you to. Cosi, please tell us. My dear, last, last. Are you staying or going? Are you that's you that's like, that's what fine. do you want us to do? <laughs> do you know, I really feel like people want permission to, to like, stay. To do, people to want stay. permission to do the thing they want to do. Yeah. So you you don't want to, it's either you don't want to leave. This is somebody that is not prepared to leave. Yeah. She wants to solve the matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you are looking for someone to say, oh, okay, this is what you should do. Whereas, um, sis, you know now. You knew before you... you yeah. You, you wrote, you typed this, this you note. know, and that might be, you know, he's cheating on you. So, you. so what are we talking about? Deep, deep down. That's it. I, I find a lot of people who message us about things like this. I'm like, but you know now. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, there's a lot of conversations we have about cheating, stay, go, leave. The day I realized that infidelity is not a deal breaker for everyone, I was surprised. But guess what? It's your life. Yeah. Do you know that that's it? That's, that's part of being a big woman. Part of being a big, big woman is your partner cheats on you it hurts your feelings but you want to work it out nobody will beat you nobody will yeah. nobody and you have can to be okay you. to like admit that yeah yes i think i think a lot of people because that's part of being a big woman and so <coughs> let's say your friends your friends are like i can't believe you stayed you say okay carry me drag me now remove remove me drag me from out of here because i think that's part of so you're, you're not going to get both things you're not going to get people's approval you're not going to but it's also not fundamentally their business if this is something you can live with deep down on your own yeah. My dear, enjoy Ooh, yourself. It's, it's your opinion it's your, <laughs> last it's your life you're the one with him you're the one with him you're if what you want him. is for him so to stop we can't help you, we can't help you there so, yeah. but if you are trying to figure out how we can help you manage situation we can't either it's up to you you're a big woman yeah, you found babe. out he's cheating it's upsetting you now have to make a decision yes. i have to own it if you decide Completely. to stay like yeah. own it with your chest that you are staying nobody yeah. is holding you <laughs> nobody is doing do you get Ho oh, and i hope that maybe do you know what this is why i always advise people to cheat in private let's so that if your partner wants to stay you make it easy for them mm. once you cause public them. disgrace it's tough. No, but it happens a lot. A lot of people would actually stay if it wasn't if it wasn't public. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because half of the time, like it is, it is. You know, people. I don't really think people's boundaries are that strong. Of, of course, a lot not. of people say that. Oh, if they cheat, I'll go. Most people actually are not going anywhere. Mm. That's that's mm. really that's really the fact. No, it's true. But it's when it becomes a public thing that you then feel also the outside pressure of like everyone now thinks you're a clown, mm -hmm. which you probably are. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you know again it's your choice you mm -hmm. can you can own being a clown mm -hmm. that can be your thing so it's fine so um my dear sis we can't stop your bo your boyfriend from cheating on you but you can decide if you are going to stay or not mm -hmm. and he has we can support you in that people may not know like who you. big big irene see this is a big child. babe this, this is a big, big babe so. you guys are just looking at the whole thing we came so. all, to, all the way to london to see irene <laughs> yes so. hey, big babe so. if any of the rest of you call me i won't come well, i'm not That's coming fact. <laughs> well, i'm not coming but you see for a big babe a bad be like this Sure. so let us tell the people you know <laughs> who you are who you what are you what do. you do all the different things that you're into so i know you're heavily involved in music you have a fashion line you podcast uh, you have a podcast let's start let's start with the music yeah. let's let's start with with your involvement in the industry okay so well i hi everybody <laughs> 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 uh, my name's irene agbontine the nine letter surname dear let me give it to you um but most people know me as irene ttya and ttya stands for taller than your average because i am taller than your <laughs> average and um do you know what it's so mad because my entrance into music came through nightlife so that's where oh, i got wow. my minister of enjoyment title from oh. so there was a club night that used to happen in london many many years ago um it was a club night called yo-yo and i used to work the door at this club night mm. so uh, think about it it's like a yeah, capacity girls, two hundred two girls so you know so yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you know you know yeah, you, know, yeah, you, know, you, hold, you yeah. know that you're the most important <laughs> you hold person all the all power, the, all the power. Wow, oh, who's power. entering this yeah. place? Yeah, I'm like, you think yeah. you're a bad boy? You can't pass me. <laughs> you see, you get. So ultimately, I started to build my network via the club night. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we would have every, it was run by two guys who worked at record labels. So they kind of always had the inside gist mm. on who was going to be the next kind of up and coming yeah. act. So we had everyone from Tiny Temper to Rita Ora to Nas to De La Soul. Like everyone oh, wow. would come through Skepta, mm. like, you know, would come to this club night yeah. every Thursday. And just to, to give you guys context, like the club only held 200 people. Ooh. And wow. every week we would have at least 2,000 people outside trying to get in. That 
that's crazy. Wow. So my relationship, so you are powerful. I was very oh, powerful. I love. You see, there's nothing I love more than power like my, that. I was very, but I was fair. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Were you? I was fair. I was fair. I was fair. I was One fair. thing about me, I, I was, was not fair. fair. <laughs> I was fair. I was fair. Like, but I was. I asserted my power. I feel like in the right ways. Because mm. there's always those people that think that they can still come and yeah. talk to you anyhow. And yeah. those ones, you didn't feel no way to be like, yeah. okay, you're either gonna wait a really long time or you're not. But how in. do you select two hundred or two thousand people? No. Uh, most so it was family and friends mostly. Okay, fair. So, yeah. so it was depending you know who, who was know. performing on the night, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and the great thing about um, the club night at the time, it was in West London, Central London, and if you guys know London nightlife, so now I'm talking like 15 years ago. Mm. More time, you had to wear like dress shoes, you had to huh, suit trousers. Like they you, tell you that this, you can't wear this, flat. It's not this, this old thing where we dress out. now to go out. Imagine like, the other day you go out in London, everybody's wearing train. I said trainers. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, had to yeah. be on heels, heels. sequence. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shoe and bag and matching, <laughs> all of that good stuff. So, like, you know, th- at that time, it was probably one of the first clubs in central London where you didn't really have to, like, it was come as you are. Yeah, you, you, wow. If you want to wear inside out outfits, <laughs> you, you know, but it was the really the epicenter of, I would say, what we now call culture, yeah. you know, mm. so music, fashion, art, like, wow. anybody that was in town, any so you celebrity. Were meeting everybody. So I was meeting everybody. So that's how my black book really started yeah. to kind of Sound really. Like, that was my dream life. I'm <laughs> telling I don't know, you. I mean, I'm, I'm dead ass. I used to want to be that girl. Uh, I, that was my dream that god <laughs> why am i studying this stupid degree god because you know when you're like the person in the sense where you know everybody yeah. i love there's nothing i love more than that it yeah. was so fun and you know what i was studying at the same time yeah. it was nice cash and have jobs i'm not gonna lie yeah <laughs> but, um, it gave me the position to be able to start to like understand how everything was intersecting mm. yeah. so how fashion music everything is really meeting in one you're seeing all the industry you're seeing all the industry coming and you're like you see someone from like mark ronson to like skepta next to each other yeah. like you know so it's like r&b hip-hop garage house yeah. like everybody's under one roof just having fun there was none of this oh um, too like it wasn't yeah. that days now where everybody's on their phone yeah. like this like mm. people were free having fun having a good time right so like for me, when nightlife kind of really took off, one of the vice presidents of Marriott Group, he used to come to our party mm. quite a lot and they were opening a new hotel called yeah. the Edition Hotel, which mm. people might have heard of. Um, and so he was like, do you guys want to come? We're opening a club in yeah. the hotel. Like, we want to want you guys to come and like recreate this vibe. So then we did everyone from like ASAP Rocky's birthday party to like, I did the first like Pigal. I brought them from Paris. We did wow. their pop up Pata or like our long term friends yeah. and family. So again, you see how music and fashion are still intersecting, intersecting with each yeah. other. Mm. So whether it will be birthday parties or celebrating new collection launch, it was all done under yeah. one roof, right? So then now you start to think, okay, I've got this crew in. Amsterdam. I've got this crew in Paris. I've got this crew in New York. Yeah. I've got this crew in Lagos. So slowly, 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 um, like all of our friendships started to build. And I guess for me at the time, I found it. I struggled working in music and fashion because yeah. I could never really find clothes that fit me. Mm. I'm so tall. Just even yeah. basic things is like long sleeve tops. Irene is sitting down, so they yeah. won't know how tall. Yeah, are you. I'm they five won't. foot eleven. Yeah, without heels, and I love a good heel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm about six one, six mm. two in heels. Mm. So it can be quite scary and intimidating, I'm not gonna lie, but I embraced it and I realized it's so funny because when I was younger, I almost shied away from the fact that I was tall. I saw yeah. it as a negative. I would always like hunch down or like, I wasn't I wasn't really owning the space, yeah. you know? And then as I got older, I realized that my tallness was my superpower. Mm. Yeah. Like, people might not remember my name. They were remember, remember the tall you. girl that yeah. yeah. like yeah. was so on the door that didn't let me in. <laughs> or the tall girl that walked they'll into definitely the room. They'll remember me like, They'll you. always remember yeah. me. So I, I almost flipped a negative into a positive. And then whilst I was working nightlife, I started my brand, TTYA. Mm. And it just started by making clothes for tall girls. Yeah. Um, my first um, collection launched in Selfridges in London and I was the first tall specific hey, brand. big baby! Yeah. No. <laughs> so, so anyway, sorry, so she just said it's as if you know, I just launched you know, down the road. Uh, my first collection, <laughs> just, you know. Excuse me? My sis, we tried. So look, the first collection was in Selfridges and then, you know, for me, I wanted to, it to be accessible to everybody. Yeah. So then at the time, I had worked at ASOS many, many years ago. So I understood where, you know, online e-commerce was, was moving, going, yeah, was yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I want everybody to access this. If you don't really know Selfridges, mostly it's, uh, it's a more of a prestigious, mm. you know, very high level luxury store, but I wanted it to feel accessible. So I put it on ASOS and to be honest, ASOS has been my biggest 
con- contributors wow. supporter of, of the brand ever since you know I've done collections with them yeah. I've got another collection coming out with them soon bop, bop. yeah and we've done shoes we've gone into other categories so oh, wow. uh, you know I was able to do shoes up to size 14 with ASOS Amazing. which was the first time you know because oh, two wow. girls also have you guys know that now. ASOS delivers to Lagos uh, <laughs> just, side just saying side <laughs> mm, yes sir. um so yeah, I would say, and then I guess for me, my network from nightlife, I was able to incorporate that into the promo with my yeah. brand. So like, for example, if we had certain celebrities staying at the hotel, I'd always make sure I had one goodie bag quickly yeah, that for I could them. just drop just in their room. Just quickly run it. You know, Ozzy, hey, you know, Ozzy, 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 to the to the yeah, chef, all of to them. the waiters, you have to so be friends with room you, service. Everybody would be just in you. You're on mm. the same side, right? So there was a few high level celebrities yeah. that I would always gift my clothes, and obviously Kylie Jenner wore it. We have had Jordan Dunn yeah. to Serena Williams to Serena. So I've been really blessed, and I guess the value that the ethos of my brand has always been an in- inclusive space yeah. for the excluded girl. Mm. Like I never felt like I fit in anywhere. Like just being tall and awkward, you know. So <laughs> I wanted to create a community that was like for girls who'd always been yeah. excluded so mm. that's how the podcast started that's how like now under the umbrella of ttya we do live events i do the podcast yeah. i do consulting on other brands i work on brands for artists merch pop-up Ozla, Ozla, so, like, Ozla, everything, Ozla, Ozla. Now, Ozla. everything is interlinking do you get <laughs> so, things are interlinking cash doila. <laughs> cash doila from, <laughs> from, from multiple all, revenue all streams angles, do you yeah. get okay so, so with the music with like working live events music so you move how did you move from like being at the door working the club into like doing stuff with music and so it's so crazy because artists would just call me because they knew me now at the, yeah. the, at the at always knowing what was going on so an artist would be like oh i'm coming to london What's i want to do an album launch party mm. or i really want to i want to i want to i want to be in a room with all the music movers and shakers yeah. can you make it happen or I'm, I've got an album coming out. I want to put out some merch. Can you help me? Yeah. So And because I had my brand, I understood production, how to make product. Like, mm. s- screen printing is not difficult. Most merch is quite straightforward. Yeah. Screen print, t-shirts, hoodies, a few things like that. So I understood the manufacturing process. So it w- people would ask me to just help them. And I, so I fell into it by accident. And you started putting them on. And yeah. then I just started helping people and then building it into a business. And, that, and then the rest was kind of history from there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell us who you have worked with. Just give us some. Just possible. give us some, you know. Well, the po- the, the most per- person that most people know me for, a Whiskey DFC, I've come I was from. Okay. I was about to, is our boy Whiskey. I say Whiskey. Yeah. Whiskey has been amazing. And we, I, even before, I had to really look at when we first worked together. Mm. Um, was two. How do you guys meet? Like, what was the, ah, what's so the backstory? So let me just do here now. <laughs> let me give you guys the real domain domain. Yeah. So. I met Whiskid in Lagos. Mm. I came, I w- um, Skepta at the time was doing Native Land Festival and his manager at the time, Grace Adoja, who I know you guys have had on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's our, our girl, babe, Grace. Big yeah. babe. So Grace called me. She said, I have this place. You have, you have to come. You have to come. <laughs> you have to come. Please. We have to make it happen. Yeah. You have to come. You have to come. And she had just started going back mm. quite regularly. And just before that, my granddad had passed away. Mm. So I felt like there was a connection with Lagos that I didn't... Yeah, with Nigeria, didn't I should say. Not Lagos because mm. of my parents. My dad's from Benin and my mom is from Onicha, mm. She's from the East. Mm. But I didn't feel like I had a connection because yeah. my mom moved to the UK. She, I was born in the UK. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I feel like my history and my heritage is Nigerian, but it's very different from when you're When you actually are there. Mm. So sure. we were, when I was young, I was there a lot but yeah. in my teenage years it was almost like my mom had installed fear because it was like if you do not get the grades you know where you, you are going they're sending <laughs> you cargo it was for they're punishment shipping you. shipping you so <laughs> you always had a negative connotation mm. associated with going back home right mm. so Grace had now gone and was like this place is, is very sweet you know like <laughs> when you're age, when you're, it's different when you go with your parents yeah when, when you go, you go on your mates. own yeah when you go with your age mates so I was like okay let me let me see what we can do here you know so that time we, did, we we were making cash doilers, but it wasn't the big boy cash doilers like we are making now, you know. So we were doing, you know, 24 hours stop over in Dubai <laughs> to get to Lagos, <laughs> like by any means necessary, you know. <laughs> so I entered and I remember getting there thinking, wow, this is mad. And this goes back to what we were saying earlier. So my first night out in Lagos, a guy sent me 12 bottles of Ace of Spades and proposed to me on the dance floor. Stop. So I was, Shit. I'm telling you, stop. I was thinking, this place, I'm, I'm no, not no, living no, here. I'm not living here. I will not go home. 
what you see that kind of see when i was saying that they will propose to you before the week is out i don't even mean it in t- i i mean somebody will actually propose i, I won't go home imagine I imagine swear. your first night out in lagos your first 12, night 12 ace of spades it can, do you know it can scatter your 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 concept <laughs> of what is velvet <laughs> if i remember the club it was one i just remember the red neon light yeah, <laughs> yeah it was one club like that and i just remember thinking yes <laughs> I had not seen money <laughs> until I went out in Lagos. You were thinking, nah, I've landed. No, I'm right. no. The way I'm that, right, they, that, they, that they pop, they, the way that they drink in this place, it doesn't make sense. I've never seen anything <laughs> like it before. And that December was, yeah, that was my love you, December. December. Yeah. That was the dirtiest. The yeah. dirtiest um, I keep of saying it that, like, we're having fun, but you see, it, because that December was that the was time what changed we, everything. It, it was like we not came of age, like age wise, but that was when we, we realized what mm-hmm. was possible. Yeah. And everything was aligning, right? The way that we use social media. Yeah. at the time like just because i remember people dming me but is this really like Lagos? the Are artists you in Lagos? like artists were now coming people yeah, were yeah, coming yeah. people were getting bigger yeah, it was yeah. it was a while yeah, everything at that time was no, just was aligning awesome. you know awesome. in exactly. terms of like the global reach of our talent yeah. Um, people wanting to come home more and also just experiencing it and having the platform to yeah. be able to share and yeah. show people what we're seeing, right? Finish, I just remember, I remember that that was the Christmas I saw John Boyega at 355. I was like, what are yeah. you doing? What are yeah, you yeah. doing? John was there. We all, that was the first Guys, time we all went to Alasha so Beach House. And I remember thinking, Beach House? There's so many Lagos. people. <laughs> I saw him and like, what's the other guy's name? Dio Kenny. I went to like somebody's Christmas party and I was like, what are you doing? Oh, that was the year that we were all in Lagos at the mm, same time. Nah, it was too much. And it was explosive, right? So, obviously, Wiz and Skep had the Ojo o- Legba remix. Yeah. So, um, Grace was doing, had her event Homecoming. It was one of the first Homecomings yeah. that they had had. And it was the first time they actually had performed the song together. together. And we were actually meant to leave. And Whiskey was like, my people, you know I have a flaw at this echo, a- a- echo signature. You people should come and stay with me. And we were like, really? He was like, no, you people should. We haven't, this is, you think you look, I've seen. You haven't yeah, really you're seen. not ready, yeah. So we were like, okay. <laughs> what so, else will you do? Well, like, are we extending? We said, extend. <laughs> extend. <laughs> we said, okay, we extend. We all moved. All of us now moved to Echo. <laughs> And that was our first experience of that echo room. Yeah, because yeah. you know, everyone Hotel is December. now there together. So we were all in that echo, and we did New Year's at, Wiz, at Wiz's house with Wiz. Um, he took us out. We had a concert. This is the first time I've seen the Wiz effect yeah. on the streets in oh. Lagos. Yeah. And when I'm in meetings now, and, I, and I'm explaining to corporate people that Whiskey until FC. you see Wizkid in Lagos, you, you have not seen him. You don't him. understand. You don't understand that is, he's yeah. literally the Michael Jackson of Africa. <laughs> So a few weeks ago, some of you just be finding out for the first time, but um, <laughs> Wizkid had a show for family and friends. Um, what? Uh, excuse me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just a few thousand others. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. Who are who? Um, but you know, as a friend of the house. <laughs> <laughs> friends and family. Friends and family. F and F. Um, yeah, um, he kind of premiered a few songs from the new album. Mm-hmm. It's incredible incredible like live yeah. i don't even call it a show installation so let me tell you my problems obviously you know i was supposed to go i couldn't make it because of like i said me and me that i said i want to walk or i don't know which Real money that, i don't know which money that i said i'm making that i can't go to whiskey show. anyway that's an aside well should be you know these when i write my memoirs <laughs> <laughs> these are all the you know challenges that one will write inside yeah. about my my rags to riches <laughs> <laughs> missing up you know i would touch a delayed gratification <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, and so let me tell you. So obviously the show was happening. I knew that this goat was at the show. Everybody wow. was there, and then all of a sudden, I got to the point of the show, and I was like, Ah, maybe my Instagram is not okay. <laughs> Where are the stories, my dear? And it was a private. A little birdie just told me I was private event. I don't have phones. I said, eh, eh, eh. We weren't allowed to have. I said, phones. No, no, no. I was invited, <laughs> so my I should have access <laughs> <laughs> to like the life to, be, to, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. to the to the content. They're like, No, 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 no phones. I thought, mm, So how would I be there? <laughs> no fun. It was crazy. So like, I, l- when we got the invitation, I was like, ah, okay, maybe you know this. Maybe they'll say this is the link. Do you get? I can't lie. I didn't think it was listen like, to it for real. or whatever. But then they were like, no, you guys have to come to like it's a whole experience. Mm-hmm. And then we, we get to the venue. I went with Koti was there. We get to the venue, and the first thing I see is this thing. I was like, what? Are they said that's the stage. <laughs> I don't get because you know like normally like uh, the, now everyone is trying to like up their game mm-hmm. but between whiskey and apple and irene i don't know that thing that they built no oh, no honestly like it was just really beautiful like because it was quite simple 
there wasn't a lot of like nobody was coming down from anything or jumping up out of anything it was a, like a plain white stage but it was built very differently the band again because you know we couldn't use our phones i can't um really you know oh, describe it off, but you know you guys will be able to watch we'll let you know about that but anyway <laughs> <laughs> like it was this really beautiful stage the band was on stage um but like can you explain it was like an <laughs> art performer it was like yeah. an art mm. installation it was it was essentially like um an installation a, a stage installation we had the dj the p- the performances but it like i said it, like it was an install mm. essentially you mm. were getting uh almost like an uh, a live version of an art installation yeah. mm. um and yeah, we got to kind of preview the new songs. We got to, you know, I feel like the the ho- I felt like it was at Roundhouse. So, if you're not familiar with Roundhouse, it's quite an iconic London venue, yeah. like a live music venue. Mm. It's in the shape of a circle mm. or a semicircle, and um, essentially, he, like you said, he opened it out to friends and family, mm. and it was um, a, an exclusive preview of that <laughs> album. But actually, it was more of a, a statement. You know, and I think we can really when 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 the performance goes live, you're really gonna see Wiz as the elevation as an artist, yeah. you know, his mm-hmm. artistry. Mm-hmm. When you even look, come down to like thinking of this, I like to look at the smaller details, right? So even like into like costume, what mm. the dancers were wearing, what Wiz was see. wearing, you know, like really every there's small details. You guys, I've been following Wiz since his first <laughs> album. You guys, Machala is now rich. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget no. about Holla Forget your about boy. It. See, <laughs> even the the wears, that's what my, I'm going to call it. The wears you know, when he I see now, I'm like, this is not all at job. This is good evening, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they have to greet him good evening, sir. They are no longer <laughs> hollering at your boy. Uh, who? Uh, who? <laughs> ah, no, is no, no. no. <laughs> you greet, good evening. Good yeah, yeah, evening. yeah. So it was, so his, his outfit was pretty cool. But, you know, because I just need to humble brag because when Kemi was in there. Oh, God. People were like, were at that show. Oh my days! Yes, I see. See, they're stars and they're stars. I'm not actually trying to be funny. I saw people were yeah, at people that. People really like. I think my favorite part of the show actually was him and Ira. I think she really. I think the great she thing about Wiz, own. one thing, she held her own one. But I feel like what we can see with this album is Wiz has always aligned himself to strong females. Yeah, Even big inclu- terms. Uh, including me. I can put myself <laughs> there. <laughs> he, we, he, he knows how to pick us. Yeah. You know, but like we can see from even the Malo with Tiwa to like, you know, Aria to Thames on the last Made in mm-hmm. Lagos album. Like he's always aligned himself with really strong females mm-hmm. and shared his platform with them, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm not, it's not by force, but yeah. you know, I think it's nice. It, like, I didn't even know Aria performed. T- yeah, she performed uh-uh. and she looked and she fire. Ha- when I say she held her own, because yeah. when you're performing, because you know, like that's the thing with if you're on, a yeah, stage. Yeah, if you're on yeah, a huge yeah, artist stage, stage, you can feel you can like, be drowned okay, out. Yeah, 100%. She looked fantastic. I think she was wearing more. Mm. She looked fabulous. The braids were braiding. braiding. The, the, the they were braiding. The braids Deeply were braiding. braiding. Yeah. She looked sensational. Her she voice was her, really her voice strong. Was, the sound yeah. in, and, and that's another thing about Roundhouse, it's an iconic music video. Because yeah. Music venue because the sound is always sensational. Mm. Yeah. They are set up for sensational yeah. sound. So everything was just aligning, you know? You know? Oh, you wouldn't know. <laughs> she can't know. <laughs> we know. We know. <laughs> you know, first of all, my God will vindicate me. You can't know. know. We are. So on this note, what do you have coming? up yeah next. what should people be what like? do you have coming up next what projects oh. can we can you talk about that we can see you know what are we expecting of course we have this broadcast on the 7th um of whiskers the preview the show anyway yeah. that we just discussed we'll all be able to watch it together <laughs> Um, but what else do you have? We have a few. I'm working on a few bits with Wiz. So mm. that's TBC. Mm, you mm, know, mm, mm. as and when. <laughs> hush, um, hush, friends and family. Hush, 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 Sorry, guys. And family. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we'll let you know. Um, I have a new collection which comes out with ASOS um, at the beginning of next year, Yay. which I'm really excited about. And, you know, again, it's just about continuing that that amazing conversation yeah. about empowering the underrepresented, whether it be girl, boy, community, culture. Mm, yeah. We're just trying to you know change the game before it changes us men oh <laughs> yeah, yeah I, love I love it, it. I love thank it. you so much thank you so much this was so much fun yes we shall yeah. be but anyway when i come back to london now uh, i'll yeah. just we'll be like I'll hello uh, yeah. lunch on me see yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll probably have another discussion after the um broadcast you know what I'm, i can't wait for people to say oh that's what jola was talking that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> i'll be yeah. like yeah that's what i was because i was wrong yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first <laughs> okay. goodbye y'all. See you later. Later. thanks guys thank you for having me Bye. <laughs>